whatever you're going through. As we sing this, just declare it over your life. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Well, good morning. 
just really quick, you know, we're a soft start this morning. I wonder what happened in this section last week. Anybody ever wonder that when you walk in? See, pastors look at this sort of thing. So I'm wondering, Lucas, did you offend somebody last week? Yeah, you weren't even here. That's the problem. So we're going to go right into a time of confession this morning. I'm just Good morning. How y'all doing today? How many of you have been fighting that fun little bug or bugs? There's three of them, I'm told, that are, are going around. Okay, there's some of you are, and then everybody else started moving away from you that raised their hands. Uh, boy, oh boy, I, I have not been afflicted with a plague in a really long time, but this last couple weeks has been just a bugger, and so uh, it is good to be here, but by the grace of God uh, this morning. So we're glad that you are here, and if you are a guest this morning, we've prayed really hard that there's nothing being spread in here except for the love of Jesus, amen? And then we also did a lot of sanitizing. So there you go. You should feel extra safe. But if you are a guest, we want to welcome you this morning. We are so glad that you are here and that we're able to worship with you this morning. There's a simple card in front of you. If you'd grab that and let us know uh, that you are here this morning, let us know how we could be praying for you and lifting you up. We would greatly appreciate that. And that's for anybody on the backside. Let us know how we can be praying for you. And then you could take that card. If this is your first time, uh, take it to the Welcome Center and go see. Uh, the Welcome Center attendant today, and we have a gift for you. Uh, if you don't want to do that, but just take that card, fold it in half, and place it back in the pocket uh, so that we can make sure to grab them at a later time. We just are glad that you are here to worship, and especially those that are watching online this morning. I uh, know a number of people that are sick this morning that are watching online, and so we just want to welcome those uh, today who are watching online. In fact, everybody just turn around and just wave at the people online. Yeah, there you go. There you go, Mitchell. Hone in on them. There you go, Dylan. There you go. There. <clears throat> wave nicely. I noticed how nobody turned around. They just gave the, yeah, no one finger waves, you know. All right, here we go. Then also today, we have a couple birthdays we want to celebrate. And so Shelby Ross Camp, happy birthday. And uh, also to Declan, uh, I always say their last name, so, so fu- I'm so sorry, but Lunuski, right? Hell, yeah, that good enough. All right. So you've only been a part of our church family for what, four years now? I still, it's Bosma. All right. But there we go. Uh, happy birthday to you guys. And uh, before we go any further, th- this is a very life saving, life changing, life altering announcement, especially for many of you men. And so uh, it's Tuesday is a very special day in the life of our culture. And if you have somebody significant in your world, uh, this day is... Dave, are you listening? (laughs) Dave. Dave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I see. I hope you were coaching your son to be getting something for Lauren for this day. All right? So, yeah, I just called that out right there online. All right. Yeah. And this is why that area over there ends up being really vacant. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 Aaron. I, you know what? I have a plan, buddy. If you wanna, if you wanna cheat off of me later, I'll let you know. I'll let. So don't worry. So on that, on that note, here the media team has something special for you guys this morning and ladies too, but guys mainly, to, to uh, be alert. And by the way, if you don't know what Tuesday is, it's Valentine's Day. Here we go. Been doing a great job this year, but listen, Valentine's Day is coming up, and by the looks of things, some of you guys aren't ready. Like not even close. We can see the fear in your eyes. So Melinda and I thought it would be a public service to give you a guide to surviving Valentine's Day. Probably. 80% chance, easy. We are women, there's no guarantees. So here are some tips to surviving the most important day of the year. No pressure. Mm -hmm. First of all, save the speech about Valentine's Day being a commercial holiday invented by corporations just to sell stuff. Yeah, a long lecture never does anybody any favors. It's like your opinion on Tom Brady. Yeah, you may have been right, but nobody cares. So, (laughs) suck it up, buttercup. It's Valentine's Day. We're doing this thing. 
<laughs> Which brings us to the flowers, chocolate, and card. Really, guys? <laughs> Most important day of the year, and you're going to go to the three most cliche gifts? Consistency, men. We need consistency. It's not that there's anything wrong with chocolate, flowers, and a card. It's just the easiest thing that you could do for us on Valentine's Day. It's like you said, hun, I love you so much. I spent six minutes at the front of Walmart. <laughs> and then you're going to say, can I have some chocolate? Don't touch my six-minute chocolate. Speaking of surprises, mm, yeah. <laughs> here's a good Valentine's Day tip. Surprise her. Take her to a movie or a show. Yeah, write a, write a poem about your feelings. Maybe do a little extra housework. Bathe. Oh, please. <laughs> Any little thing that you can do that shows that you've planned ahead and you're thinking about her. Yeah, guys, literally anything. You have wisely set the romance bar so low all year <laughs> round that now it's time to reap the sweet, easy reward. Is this going to help you survive Valentine's Day? Probably. But the most important thing to remember is that God brought you two together for a reason. A tax break. I, I was going to say to glorify God, but... That was second on my list. You know, a, a few extra dollars in your pocket doesn't hurt anything. They're coming up. God brought you two together to serve others and to sacrificially love one another and to glorify His name. Just take a few minutes this Valentine's Day and remember that. So any small way that you can find to express that, any way at all, hey, you're on the road to surviving Valentine's Day. We good here? Good. Now you go get them. Go em. get them. You got this. There you go. I know some of you guys, your wives, if you spent six minutes thinking about Valentine's Day, they might end up in the emergency room. <laughs> so come on, guys, you could step it up. All right, here we go. So speaking of stepping it up, uh, consistory tomorrow night. And so uh, elders meeting, we're going to go from 6.30 to 7.30, but then full consistory is going to be at 7.30. Now that is a change from normal, so, and there's a reason that we're meeting at 7.30, so guys, get ready, all right? If you uh, have any questions for our elders, if you would like to become a member or uh, receive baptism or transfer a membership, uh, speak with one of our elders and we'll get you on the schedule uh, for tomorrow evening. Then, uh, as you walked in, you, just a, a reminder, uh, there's a little stand. Next week, it will take a little bit more life to it, uh, but we're going to be selling lemonade in uh, grateful anticipation for springtime. Anybody excited for spring? Uh, and that, that uh, lemonade that we're going to be selling is in a concentrate form, and uh, it is some great, great stuff. Some ladies went to a lot of work to can that, and uh, that concentrate uh, is going to sell for $5 a jar, and any of those proceeds will go towards our trip to Tajikistan. And uh, thank you for your generosity the last couple of weeks towards that trip. I believe at this point we're about $6,500 that has been raised. Uh, $20,000 is the, the, uh, the overall cost for those going, and so uh, if you want to contribute via the lemonade or a private donation, uh, you can do so in the back at the blue box. So just a reminder for that. Also, um, as I've been talking with JJ, who's our missionary in Tajikistan, if you are uh, looking for a deduction and you're going, hey, within our farm operation, it works better to actually buy parts and just write that portion off. Um, we have a number of mechanical parts like alternators and bolts and uh, gaskets and John Deere parts. I don't know why John Deere parts, because something. Anyway, um, but you would you'd go, hey, I'd be willing to know, uh, pay for those parts so you could take them with you. Uh, you could see myself or one of the folks going to Tajikistan, and we can uh, share a few of those details. Then also, next week is, uh, is the 19th of February. So big surprise for many of you. But the 19th of February, which is the kickoff for our life groups. And so anybody excited about life groups? I see a few people, you know, Caroline's very excited for life groups. Anybody really excited for the food that you get at life groups? Um, if you went to the Welcome Center and hoped to sign up for a couple groups this morning and couldn't find those sheets, sorry you missed out. Two groups are completely sold out already. Yay. Woo, woo. 
Uh, another one is really close to getting there. And just because uh, you, um, you don't see a lot of names on those groups, uh, a lot of the folks that were at those groups the previous year, years are returning. So please just make sure that you sign up today for a life group. Uh, we're going to be going through the second season of The Chosen, and you're going, wait a minute, I didn't go to the, through the first season of The Chosen. Guess what? You're just fine. Get signed up with life groups. It's where we get to live life a little bit more intimately. It's where we get to connect on, on different levels in each other's homes. This is a great opportunity to get to know one another at different levels. And so please, please, please sign up for life groups starting next Sunday evening. Then on the back, everybody say the back. Grab your backs. Yeah, there, wow. <laughs> no, Randy thought that was really funny. <laughs> Lots of announcements. Just a reminder, Soup Summer coming up for Ash Wednesday service, which is just about 10 days away now. And so we want to encourage you to come for that special Wednesday evening service. And then one thing I'm going to draw attention to uh, for the fellowship team is that on March 31st is a rodeo night. That is uh, in lieu of Ladies Night Out. So ladies, you get like the preferential treatment here, but it is for anybody and everybody. So please sign up if you would like. What's that? That's your bir- It's in honor of Monica's birthday. <laughs> Perfect. I see how you work that out, Jim. That's pretty smart. Anyway, sign up, please. We have 60 tickets. If we need more, we just need to know quickly. So uh, please make note of that. Well, this morning, just a few announcements to let you know what's happening uh, in our church family and one another's lives. Just continue to uh, be praying for little Reagan um, as, as she uh, started treatments this week in order to help uh, with the seizures that she's having. So prayer there. Prayer for Karen Vanderscaff as she has another injection this week. The first round did not work uh, the way that they hoped, so they're going to go a little differently this week. Prayer for Karen. Of course, continued prayer for Allie Vental. We're so glad to see Lee back in service today after uh, all that he's been through. So Lee, great to see you this morning. We're going to uh, pray for Pastor Carl and Kathy and their family as uh, Carl's sister Betty passed away on Friday afternoon. And so she got to graduate uh, into eternity. What an incredible Sunday it is for her today. But for you all, we grieve with you and uh, our prayers are with you and, uh, and with her family. And I believe that they're going to be traveling tomorrow. And so prayer for safe travel as they, uh, as they celebrate Betty's life. And then also just prayer for Carol Glidewell. Uh, Carol it was supposed to be coming home this week from uh, uh, the nursing home. She's been uh, under rehabilitation after her surgery. Uh, however, they found a fracture now in her foot, which is going to stave her or uh, extend her stay for a little bit longer. So let's be praying uh, for Carol as well. I'm sure there are many other things I am missing this morning, but let's, uh, let's come before our Heavenly Father in a time of prayer. And this morning as we do that, I'm actually going to uh, do something a little different in our prayer time, and that is I'm going to let John chapter 14 verses 1 through 6 lead and direct our prayer time. And so if you have your Bibles with you this morning and you just like to, to follow along in this new year, it's been a challenge that God has had me in where I've been praying through Scripture and boy... It's just been very refreshing in this season for me, and so maybe this would be by way of just helping you as well. John chapter 14, New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, fourth gospel, John chapter 14. Starting in verse 1, and I, and I will, uh, guess what, you can pray with your eyes open, did you know that? Some of you are freaking out right now. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It's really hard to keep your eyes closed all day long. So uh, you can pray with your eyes open. But Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning thanking you for your presence in this place. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for the refreshing of your Holy Spirit, and we just ask for more of it. Lord God, we want to thank you, Lord, that we can be here today and encourage one another, lift one another up, Lord God, to uh, hear your word, to be refreshed by it. And Lord God, we just want to thank you that your word is, is uh, sharper than a two-edged sword, that it divides between bone and marrow, goes to the very heart of, of who we are. And so, Lord God, we ask that you would go to work cutting away those things this morning, Lord God, that are not of you. We're reminded, Lord Jesus, of the words that you taught us in your scriptures where you remind us to not let our hearts be troubled. 
And so, Lord God, on that this morning, God, we lift our troubles up to you. And there are many. Lord God, we lift up those that are are struggling in so many different ways. Lord, those in our lives, Lord God, that are troubled by addiction, those that are troubled uh, by heartache, those that are troubled by, by loss and grief and Lord God, we just lift those families up. Lord God, we, we think of Burton this morning and we ask that you would continue to, to be with him in his grief process. Lord, we pray that you'd be with the Bootsma family, Lord God, as they continue to grieve the loss of, of Marley. Lord God, we, we pray for, for Jim Buse as he grieves the loss of Judy. And Lord, this morning we pray for the Gearhart family as they grieve the loss of Betty. Lord God, we're just reminded this morning that we can come to you in our times of trouble. Lord, we pray for Carol Glidewell this morning as, Lord, she so hoped to come home uh, this week and return home after a lengthy stay. And, Lord God, now to find out that she's got a longer stay, we just ask that you would be with her, be with Karen as she, uh, Lord, was so hoping that these injections were going to, Lord, point them in the direction that they needed to go for the procedures ahead. And so, Lord, we lift up those procedures this week or those injections this week that you would lead, guide, and direct the doctors. Lord, we thank you, uh, Lord, for Lee being back in the service this morning, and and Lord, we we thank you for the health that's returning to his body, and Lord, we know what a season of struggle it's been for him and for Karen. Uh, We just continue to pray for health there. Lord, uh, we pray this morning for, for Doug and Marilyn. As, as Lord God, we know that they've been struggling with, with, with some back and side issues. Lord, we ask for healing over their bodies. Lord, we pray for those that, that have had unexpected losses in pregnancy, Lord, these last few weeks, and we just pray that you would be gracious to them and merciful to them. Lord God, we pray for, for little Reagan right now as, as Lord God, she is uh, receiving these special steroid treatments that, uh, Lord God, we pray would, would take away, Heavenly Father, those seizures that she's been having. Lord God, be with Brian and Jordan as they are by her side and as... Lord God, they love her and and, and coach her through this. Lord God, there are are many others that have troubles as well. We think of all of those that are struggling with cancer. And God, we ask that you would be special, gracious to them. Lord, we we pray for Jerry as he started his radiation last week. And Lord, we pray for Helen as she's starting on her pills. We pray for Les and and for Stan and, and for many others. Lord God, we pray for uh, Nancy Van Dyke this morning, and Lord God, we, uh, we pray for her as she uh, has another blockage, and God, we just ask that you would be with the doctors as they uh, go to work on her body. Lord God, you remind us that our hearts should not be troubled, and why they should not be troubled when we encounter trouble is because we believe in you. And Lord God, when we believe in you, there are promises that you give us that in your house are many, many rooms. If it were not so, you told us, you would have not told us that. But you've gone and you've prepared a place for us. And you promise that if you've gone to prepare a home for us, that you will one day come back and take us to be with you. Lord God, such powerful words of promise this morning. Lord God, to think of that word home. Lord God, to think of spending eternity with you. Lord God, give us a deep sense of those promises this morning as we worship you. God, give us a deep sense of your presence this morning as we praise you. Lord God, we ask that there would be even a sense of celebration as we worship you this morning because you are faithful and true. Lord God, we can even imagine this morning as we say those words and we think of that safety in your presence, Lord God, of, we could think and imagine of us sitting in your presence and, and fellowshipping with you, laughing with you, crying with you, sensing the power of your love all around us. Lord God, may we grab a hold of that today. And Lord God, as we encounter your love, we're reminded, Lord God, that we need you. Lord God, we're reminded of our sinfulness. Lord God, we're reminded of the chaos in our lives that sin brings. And so, Lord God, in your great and infinite love this morning, we take a moment and we confess those sins, Lord God. 
and we place them at the foot of your cross and we cry out for forgiveness. Lord God, forgive us for our shortcomings. Forgive us for our lack. Forgive us for our weakness. For Lord God, it's in your weakness that we are made strong. Lord God, this morning we ask that your word would feed us and that your spirit would lead us in this time and in the week to come and the months to come. Lord God, may we not take it for granted. Lord God, this morning, what privilege it is that we are able to pray the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Amen. Church family, I'd ask that you'd stand to your feet this morning. You'd gently stretch. Try to wake up after you just got done praying. I heard a few of you snoring. (laughs) And I want to just ask you to take this moment and to take your time in this moment because this is a part of our active worship together of loving on one another well, meeting those around us that we don't know, giving a, a, a word of encouragement, asking the Spirit to speak through us as we speak to one another. And so I would ask that you'd remove yourselves from your seats this morning, go out into the aisles, go find somebody maybe you don't know, tell them Jesus loves them, and so do you. Take a few moments and greet one another today.
I love it. Even kids are out in the aisles. This is wonderful. Some of you are still greeting one another. That's just fine. You can continue to keep doing that. But I'm going to use what we use for prayer is also our call to worship this morning from John. So maybe you come to worship this morning, you go, my heart is really troubled. My heart is struggling. I am heavy and I'm, I'm, I'm burdened. And I, I pray for you in this moment as we get to proclaim God's goodness through the act of song and worship, that the troubles that you have may be lifted. You know, Jesus spoke these words as He was talking to His disciples as he was about ready to face the cross, just hours away, and he's trying to encourage them that no matter what trouble that they would encounter, that he would be with them always. Do you know that the trouble that you're encountering this morning, that the Spirit of God is with you and he's with you always? Maybe you're not not finding any trouble today and you're encouraged. Well, that's even better news. The hope, that, the hope that we have is that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and He's interceding on behalf of all of us this morning. Jesus reminds us in verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Church, He's your way this morning. He's the truth in a world that has no clue what truth is. And you know what? He wants to give you life. So this morning as we worship, let's worship Him, the giver of truth, the giver of life, the one who gives us away. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, with arms outstretched this morning, we prepare to encounter You. Feed us and lead us. That's the word this morning over and over again. Feed us and lead us. And so as we worship You today. God, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory due to your name because we love you. We're so honored to be in your presence. So woohoo! here we go.
you're going to cheer more later at the Super Bowl. Let's hear it for Jesus. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I could use an unstoppable God that can do impossible things. Am I the only one? Amen. So, Lord Jesus, right now, we thank you that you are big. That your name carries so much power. Father God, we have things in all of our lives that we'd like to take control over. God, that we think that we do a better job of managing. God, we are terrible by ourselves. We are not good at it. So God, right now, I, I just pray that everyone in this room would just hand those things over to you. God, we hand our relationships over to you, our finances over to you. God, depression, addiction, anxiety. God, we hand over pain. Knowing that we have a king that is amazing and wants to give us freedom in all of those areas. The king is in the room. Come see the scars of love upon his hand. King is in the room. We'll watch the darkness flee at his command. And who is this king? Who is this king? His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Light of the world.
you that you are a king who does what no other kings do, who laid down his life for us. God, thank you. Thank you. Amen. You may be seated. hundred percent honesty, this is the best I've felt all week long. Thank you, worship team. Just needed to spend more time in worship. I uh, am justifying this morning, so I've been told many times not to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I haven't been able to put two cohesive thoughts together. most of this week, and, uh, and so uh, good luck with this morning, y'all. I, uh, God's grace is, is better than all of that, but it has been a little bit of a fight uh, this week to, to keep uh, life moving forward, and uh, so I, I, I give that to you this morning, asking for your grace if all of a sudden we go off in a direction and Brian just all of a sudden doesn't make any sense anymore. Hopefully the Spirit works better than all of that. But uh, in that, I'm going to pray for, for this message this morning. As Lord God, we continue to pursue after You. Lord God, there is just such power in being reminded that You are holy and we are not. Or God, I can only imagine this morning what it has to look like gathered around your throne as the angels of heaven to cry continually, holy, 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 in awesome wonder of who you are, a God who is never changing, a God who is always faithful, a God whose promises will always be fulfilled whose answers are yes and amen. A God who would empty Himself to die upon a cross that I might have life, that you might have life. But more importantly, was raised again by your mighty power. And the fact, Lord God, that you would empty yourself out Place yourself on this earth to walk alongside of us to die a sinner's death. Lord God, in and of itself would, would have been enough. And yet you say that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead has been given as a gift to us. Who are we that you are mindful of us? That you would love us enough not only to give us the gift of life, but then you would endow us with this power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. So God, we're here to worship you today. We're excited to hear from your word. So Lord God, this morning I pray that you would hide me behind the cross of your son Jesus. That the words that are spoken would be yours and yours alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This little series that uh, we've entered into leading into Lent, which is crazily just a few days away, 10 days I believe, next Wednesday the 22nd, we'll then begin walking a, a journey together towards the cross. The staff has put a lot of time into what that journey is going to look like, so hopefully just to whet your appetite a little this morning. Hopefully you're getting excited for that. Just like we get excited for Advent, which leads us to Christmas, I hope you're excited for Lent, which is a new type of Advent as we look forward to Resurrection Sunday. But we started out this year looking at a verse, which is our life verse for the year, Mark chapter 9. It comes from 924 that says, I believe, but help my unbelief. 
Help my unbelief. Help me grow in a greater level of faith. Jesus, simply, I just want more of you. Where I lack, I want more of you. Where I lack, I want you to be strong. And, and one, of the thi- one of the characters in Scripture that has just struck me that I've been taking us in the path of the last few weeks is, is this prophet Elisha, a man of incredible faith. A man who has walked an incredible journey, and I know we've only, just in our time together, been able to get through a few verses, and and we're going to go a little bit further beyond today, but we've been looking at his call to something greater, the call from the ordinary faith life to the extraordinary faith life. And I guess that would be my hope for us in 2023 and beyond, is that we are not just caught in an ordinary faith, but we lean towards more of the extraordinary, long for more of the extraordinary, longing for what we just prayed for a moment ago, that the power of the Holy Spirit that has been given to us as the church, as His people, would be even more manifest in the present time in which we're in. That we're not continually looking backwards at what was and settling on what has been, but that we're looking forward to the promises that will be. And I believe that there are many promises that God wants to expose to us in this upcoming year as He continues to lead us as His his people. We looked at several things of the faithfulness in chapter 19 of 1 Kings. By the way, you want to turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings today, 2 Kings chapter 2. But we've been looking at at, at Elisha's call uh, in in 1 Kings chapter 19, and a few things that we've been looking at is one, how he was doing ordinary business, doing his ordinary job, extremely ordinary individual, and yet God called him to bigger things. Not only that, but when God called him through the mantle of Elisha being placed, or the mantle of Elijah being placed on him, he ran after the opportunity. He ran after what was being open to him. And I just want to remind us this morning: what are you running after today? Are you running after the things of this world? Or are you running after the, the expansiveness of God, what He wants to open and provide for you in this faith that we call Christianity? Are you running after the things of God in your lives, in your businesses, in your marriages, in your family, with your kids, in the struggles, in the hardships that you might find yourself in right now? Are you running after the things of God? And are you excited about it? Because guess what? Elisha had no idea what was in store for him. But he knew and felt the call of God to go to deeper things. And so he ran after it with all that he was worth. That's the the beauty about the faith journey is we don't exactly know what each step of it looks like. And some of us get fearful about that, but as a church body, we should get excited about that. Okay, nobody's excited. So Elisha ran after it, and as he's running after the things of God, as he's running after uh, Elijah, he catches a thought. Remember we talked about this last, he caught a thought. How many of you have ever caught a thought before? You have a, a, (laughs) yeah, some of you are catching lots of thoughts right now about me. See, couldn't put two thoughts together, and then he's yelling at us right out the gate. How many of you have caught a thought before and sometimes that thought looks like that of doubt? Boy, the the, the greatest enemy of faith is doubt and fear. All of a sudden, Elisha, as he's catching up with Elijah, catches a thought and that thought hits him of going, you know what, if this doesn't work out, I can always go back to what I did before. Oh, and Elisha takes that thought And decides that he's going to do something about it. He goes back to where he came from. And and I think there's something I missed last week that the Spirit has reminded me of repeatedly this week I'm going to go to. uh, but, But first off is the fact that when Elisha went back, he went and killed the cows and burned the plows. You know what? He could have sold all of that stuff and had a little ching ching and a little bling bling, but he decided not to. 
Why? Why wouldn't he have done that? I mean, what a, what a terrible waste of resources. I mean, he could have given it, and yet he decides to make sure that it's all been obliterated. Why? Because, you know what, even the money in his pocket might have been tempting to go back, and I have this little bit of security that I can rely on. But you've got to realize that Elisha was all in. Elisha was like, I'm going to jump in after this, and I have no fallback, so God, you're the only one. How many times do we need to be in that spot of going, you know what, God, you're you're my only one. You're my only fallback. I don't care about retirement, which you should, by the way, if you're going to be good stewards, so don't go there. But, but the bottom line is, is that you know how fast the stock market could go. Some of you lost a lot of money this last couple of years in the stock market. And yet, we don't have to live in fear of those things, do we? Why? Because we have a God that provides for His kids. A God that, that says, I will lead and guide you. I will make level your path that his children will not have to beg for bread. Guess what? If you're one of his kids, you're his sons and daughters. That means you can take your troubles and concerns and cares to him, and he cares for you. If he cares for the, 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 the sparrows of the air, if he knows the numbers of hairs on your head, he knows every speck of, of sand and dust there is on this earth, how much more will he not care for you? Wow. And so here, Elisha goes, no, I'm not falling back on anything. I'm falling ahead into the arms of God, going, God, I trust you in this journey. I don't know how it's going to play out, but I trust you. What a faith. And one thing that I really appreciate about Elisha, this is where I was going about how all week long this has been stirring. You know what? He finished well so he could start well. I know that that's been something that, 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 that Melody and I have wrestled with and, and, and with folks that we've counseled over the years. I know as a staff, we've talked about this many different times well, but you know what? Sometimes it's how you finish a season that helps set you up for the next season. Maybe that's a word for some of you right now that feel like you're coming to the end of a season, whether that be with a, with, with a job, maybe that's a, a, an end of a season, even with a, a relationship in some way, sh shape, or form. How you finish a thing helps plant the seeds for how you will begin the next journey. Church family, how are you finishing so that you can begin well? Listen, we, we live in a society, in a world that goes, you know what, I don't care how I finish this, it's all about the next moment, but let me tell you that there's something powerful about God's kingdom people that when we finish something well, God blesses it so that the door is open for what's to come, laying way for blessings that come to the future. So maybe an encouragement for you. Oh boy. No, really? <laughs> okay. See, I put two... My daughter just said, what just happened? kingdom people, what would it look like if we ended the race of this life well so that we could begin the next race even better? What would it look like for us not to, to, and maybe this is speaking to somebody who's bedridden at home, or maybe this is speaking to somebody who's in a nursing home, maybe this is speaking, you know what, I don't see too many people in the race of this life all that well. I could name several that I have. But what does it look like to end this race with faith of going, I'm not going to be a miserable person at the end, I'm going to continue to give God all the praise, honor, and glory I'm not going to give my kids a run for their money as they try to put me into the nursing home. You laugh now. You're, none of you are in that spot. You know what? I am going to make sure that as I end that race, that I, I tell my, as I get into those latter years, that I'm going to tell my kids about the God that I know. And I'm going to show them that not just about the God that I knew, but the God that I know now and the God that's leading me into the next season and the God, the hope of what's to come and the fact that, yes, this earth wants to hold me down and wants to bind me down. And yes, I'm going to miss those that I have deep relationship with on this side of eternity. But guess what? What's coming next is so much better. Amen. So make sure you're there with me. Whew. Come on. How we finish a thing Help set us up 
for how we enter into the next season. Think, Elisha, that was all free, by the way. Aren't you glad? So Elisha goes running after it. He goes and follows Elijah. And Elijah mentors him for what we believe to be about six years. And you know what? The Scripture doesn't give us a whole lot of indication as to what those six years of walking together look like. Wouldn't you love to know what Elijah shared with Elisha? And yet we know that they lived a lot of life together and that Elisha got to encounter God's presence even more deeply. And now that opens up the Scripture for today, 2 Kings chapter 2. Starting in verse 1. And then when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Now there's a small chance today that I am not going to get to where I thought I might be going. (laughs) But I want you to take note, and this is any time you hear Scripture read, when you start to see names in Scripture, you're going to see a few here, you're going to see Gilgal, you're going to see places like Bethel, and places like Jericho, and the Jordan. There's a reason that every one of these is placed in these Scriptures, and so if we don't get there today, why were they on their way to Gilgal? What does Gilgal represent in Scripture? Maybe time to go more deeper in your personal time if I can't get to where I think we should go today. So anyway, they're on their way. And so uh, now I have to turn the page. Nope, let's go here. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Everybody say, stay here. Stay here. here. The Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as sure as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. I won't say what that means in the original language. Verse 4, then Elijah said to him, Stay here. And Elisha, uh, stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. And there was a company of prophets there. And at Jericho, they went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that your Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. See a pattern going on here? And then Elijah said to him, stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Now 50 from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stood at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. And the water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over the dry ground. And when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind, and Elisha saw this and cried out, my father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel, and Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garments and tore them in two. Elisha took and picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. And he took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. And when he struck the water, it divided to the right and the left, and he crossed over. Here ends the reading of God's Word. I want to stop there this morning because there's so much there that could pack weeks of Sundays. Guess what? It won't. Not this time. There's a few things that happen here that I find 
fairly fascinating that I, I think speaks to our faith journey and maybe the faith journey where we as a church are at. First and foremost, I believe that God wants to give to his people a double portion. What does that mean? I believe here uh, what Elisha is asking is something that is absolutely incredible but sets an example for what we as God's children should always be asking. What Elisha is asking here is I want more of God's presence in my life. I want more. Elijah, I've been watching you for six years, but what I want is even more. I don't want what was, I want what is coming. God, I want more of your power. God, I want more of your presence. God, I want more of your miracles. I've seen Elijah do incredible things. God, I've seen amazing things in 2022. I saw amazing things in 2021. 2022, we don't know what happened, but 19, or two, you know, come on. <laughs> Remember there was this thing, COVID? Yeah. How many of us saw amazing things in the midst of COVID where God showed up? If, if we cannot stop for just a moment and think back over the, the previous years and know that God has been doing something active, we need to be stirred in our faith even more. But sometimes we settle on what was. Oh, that was really good. Oh, God, way to go. Man, do you remember back in the day? Instead of believing for what's coming. This is where Elisha was. Thank you, Elijah, for showing me how God's power works and is activated. Thank you for showing me how to pour into his word even more and to trust him at new levels. But I want more. Do you want more? Then cry out for it. In the midst of your pain, in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your questioning, in the midst of your uncertainty, cry out for more. This is why we see these verses ahead of time with Elisha. There's a crisis that is trying to be stirred up here, if you haven't noticed, with Elisha. There's a testing that's taking place. Maybe some of you are in the testing fields of your faith right now. Here for six years, Elijah has been following Elijah, and now he knows that Elijah's last days are right here upon him. And then his mentor says to him, stay here, I'm going to go on alone. Boy, how painful that must have been. What? Don't go any further? And yet how many of us have been the Elisha in that moment where we have encountered great, great openings of faith in our life. We've encountered great God things where God wants to take us to the next level, but we're okay to stay right here. Oh, I'm comfortable now with what this looks like. Let's just stay put. This is fine. I've got enough to, 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 to marinate on for the next 20, 30, 40 years. That was good. That was a great encounter with God, but man, we'll just sit here for a while. Anybody ever guilty of that? Are you guys all awake? Am I, is this just, maybe, am I putting two sentences together? Okay. I'm starting to question this. I mean, here Elisha, is he, there, there's this temptation, if you will, or this, this opportunity where even his mentor said, hey, you can just stay right here. You'll be just fine. I'm going to go on. And what I love about Elisha is he goes, no way. I want to go where you're going. Guess what? You're following after the things of God. So I want to hitch my horse to that wagon and go after it. I, I, I don't want to settle I, I, I don't want to stay right here. This is nice and all, but, but wherever you're going, I know that you're going to encounter God, so let's go. And, and not only that, so, so he says, guess what? Wherever you go, Elijah, this is my commitment to you. Wherever you go, I go, because I know where you go, the presence of God is. And, and, and then after they get to that location, Guess what? They're caught with another discouraging word. Here, the prophets of the Lord. The prophets of the Lord. The well-meaning church people. If you've been to church for any period of time, you know these people. I am one of them, unfortunately. 
You know, those moments where those people, those good, well-meaning people end up being the very voice piece of the enemy that speaks discouragement into the very moment where you go, no, my faith wants to take me to the next level, but that word of going, guess what's going to happen? You go any further, (laughs) it's going to be taken from you. You ever been there? That's why I continually tell new folks that come to church, because anytime you gather new people together, and any, 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 we're, we're a perfect mess. We have a way of saying things at times without thinking about what we're saying. We end up saying things that the enemy takes and twists, and it lands really hard on somebody, and they go, that's why I don't go to church. That's not why we go to church, right? People are going to, we're hurting people hurt people. We're all going to step on each other's toes. This is where we've got to live in a place of grace and forgiveness. But well, boy, here, Elisha, he gets it one time after another after another. And every time he has an opportunity to back off, he has an opportunity to stay, a temptation to not go any further in his faith. And then on top of it, discouragement is heaped upon discouragement about what is to happen to the point where he goes, shut it. Some of you have to tell the voices around you nicely to shut it. Sometimes, he, <laughs> Tara, somehow that amen seemed directed at me. <laughs> and maybe so. And maybe so. Because there's maybe some times where you go to go, Pastor, as much as I appreciate you trying to speak into my life, you're missing the boat. Guess what? I'm fully human. I screw up all the time. Shh. And so the bottom line is we're going to have these discouraging moments, especially, especially as we get closer to the call that God has on our lives, especially the more we get closer to what God is leading and guiding and directing us to, those discouraging words, those discouraging moments, those temptations to stay and just be comfortable will increasingly grow. But if we can go together, if we can remind one another that what lies before us is so much better than what has come behind, that in the in the end times, which I believe we are in, hallelujah, that he is going to pour out new oil, that he's going to pour out new wine, that we're going to have new visions, signs, wonders, and dreams. Those are the promises that are afforded us. I want that. And I hope you do too. I want that double portion. I want this church to encounter that double portion. And let me tell you, it's going to take a double portion of God in the life of his people, in order to jerk our society out of the junk and funk that it's in. And guess what? I believe God wants to pour it out more than ever before on people who are willing to walk that uncomfortable journey at times. Elisha was committed, he was resolved, and he was determined. Nothing he said, will separate me from you, Elijah. I hope that that would be our tenaciousness as well, that we would go, God, I am committed to you, I am resolved to you, and I am determined to follow you no matter what. No matter how dark, no matter how hard, no matter what that looks like, God, I want that mantle that you have to rest on me, that I may operate in the giftings that you've empowered me to. One of the things that I had encouraged you, and I'll close out in this, one of the things that I had encouraged you in is to look at the different places that they traveled to. And it's amazing. If you look at Gilgal, what does Gilgal represent in the Bible? It was the place of first encampment. It was the place of of promise. It was the place of cutting away. Sometimes in our spiritual walk, we have to cut, not sometimes, always in our spiritual walk, God is calling us to cut away the things of the world, to walk in tighter with Him. The next place that they went was Jericho. Jericho is a great representation of that, of victory. God not only wants to separate us from the things of the world, but he wants to give us victory and he wants to open up new opportunities and new blessing. Excuse me, that was the third place. The second place was Bethel. Bethel was a place of encounter. Bethel is where they heard the voice of God. As you walk this journey, are you asking God to speak to you? 
Are you asking God to encounter you in new and powerful ways? Then the place of victory was Jericho, and then the Jordan, which was a place of refreshing. It was a place of crossing over. It was a place of starting over. As we walk this this faith journey together, as we ask God for that double portion, I pray that we would separate ourselves from the things of this world. That we would encounter God more fully. That we would walk into new places of victory and that we would find new refreshing. Would you join me in prayer? Lord God, as we cry out to you this morning, God, we do love you. And we're so grateful that you hear us. Lord God, we're so thankful that you are faithful always, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God, this morning as we cry out to you, Heavenly Father, we ask that you would pour out upon us a double portion. Lord God, that you would prepare us for what that looks like. Lord God, that we would not be comfortable to stay here, but that we would press on for what's ahead. That we would press on for what's ahead more in you. Lord God, sometimes I, even in my own flesh, I think when, we, when I say, well, well, let's press on to more, we, we, we think about bigger and better things. But Lord God, sometimes that pressing into more is more of your presence, it's more of your power, it's more of your healing might. Lord God, it, it's more of freedom abounding more and more around us. God, we just want more of your presence, more of your presence, more of your presence in our midst. Amen. That you would help us in our unbelief that we would be dangerous for you. The darkness would fear the fact that God's people in Woodstock, Minnesota are willing to step up to the plate to put on that armor and to go into battle proclaiming the truth of who you are. Lord God, that we would radically transform our culture here in southwest Minnesota and beyond. That we would radically be able to transform the culture within our own homes Lord God, that we would be able to radically transform, Lord God, those lives around us through the power of the Holy Spirit that need to be changed and transformed for you. God, we want more of you. And we pray these things boldly this morning because you've invited us to. Show us what it looks like. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our uh, closing hymn of response this morning is going to be hymn number 727. Hymnals can be found at your feet right before you if you'd like, 727 or up on the screen. And uh, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of Faith is the Victory. Hymn number 727, Faith is the Victory.
I'd like to invite you all to stay for a time of fellowship after the service, and then we'd welcome you all to stay for Sunday school. At the top of the hour, you'll hear a bell ring, and uh, for students, you can go back to your classrooms. For adults, if you'd like to come back, we're going to do an extended time of worship today as we continue to lean in to what God is speaking to us in this season. Now, church family, go in the victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has already given you all that you need for life and godliness. And may this week you find Him filling you to overflowing. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen and amen. Have a blessed week.